My name is Robert Jenkins. I have been trapped and isolated on Starship Mercy for one year, 64 days, 17 hours, 13 minutes, and 16 seconds. I am making this video log because I have nothing else to do. Ship is currently without main power. We have no control over direction. No way to maneuver. We're on a slow and steady trajectory. Depending on when you find this log. I was part of a crew of five. Part of the United Nations space program. We were sent on a five year mission to colonize. A planet that had been earmarked for human habitation. A little into uh, a year of what should be a two year journey, we were performing some routine maintenance on the starboard side of the hull. It's a typical four-man job. Four out on deck. Me controlling MCC. Monitor crane control. I coordinate movement from inside the cockpit. Uh, we had three on weld and one electronics. We were having issues with our communication line. We, uh, We'd lost track of immediate proximity scanning, which isn't a major issue in itself, but can happen. We had three guys out, taking some minor meteor damage on the starboard side of the hull. Three cosmonauts out on the deck, as I said, and one electronics fixing the, trying to fix the proximity radar. Um, this is a protein shake. We fill out with one metric ton of protein powder. Figured I'd get drinking. So we were uh, performing routine maintenance and repair. The stuff's not actually that bad. We were 47 minutes into the procedure. The weld had been repaired, closed up, the butt weld it's down the crack. The electronics were proving a little more intricate. 
three welding cosmonauts went to assist with nutrition. And, uh, we were under a barrage in a matter of seconds of a large quantity of small meteorites. I say small, somewhere as large as a car, a small car. I was part of a team of five. Because I was on cockpit. I was the only one that uh, survived. Um, I'm not making this because I'm not making it because I want to tell a story of despair. I'm making it to keep myself occupied. But I wanted to give whoever sees this, whenever you see it, a little bit of background as to how I ended up in this situation. The hull, surprisingly, took some superficial damage. One of the cosmonauts I was able to get back inside the ship, he died. Three days later, had him on life support. But I'm not a surgeon. You have massive, massive internal bleeding. He should have died. He lived on a little bit longer. Um, while the hull escaped with superficial damage, we do a lot of damage to hydraulic, especially electrical. We have auxiliary power. As you can see, we're uh, moving in a very slow but steady direction, of which I have no control. I have life support. I have oxygen. I have a green room or greenhouse through there. I have a pistachio plant fresh off the train. I even have a banana tree. I've successfully cultivated wheat, oilseed rape. I'm essentially self-sufficient. I give the plants CO2, they give me oxygen. It's a pretty good deal. Um, we also lost. <coughs> I just can't stop saying we. I also lost communication. I have no way of relaying back to Earth. I think that was part of the motivation to make the video logs. It's taken me the best part of a year to repair the ship as best I can. I'm not a welder. I'm a biologist. I have a wife and Two kids on Earth. Maria, Jack, and Katie. Maria, my wife. Um, you should have seen her face when I said that I've been picked for a five-year mission. Jack and Katie were... Uh, I'd grown up. They were... We're proud. 20 and 23. Um, I digress. I... Some sufficient, I can grow food, I can produce water. Artificially created water, but still tastes okay. 
but I have no way of navigating the ship. And while I have kept myself as busy as I can, I continue my research. So I have the main ox unit coming back on. I can't really complain with the noise. It keeps me alive. Um, it just circulates oxygen. I've uh, yeah maintained my experiments. I've um, let me try one of these pistachios. I've never uh, even seen a pistachio tree. Prior to the little baby saplings that they brought in the shuttle. Try one. They smell really good. I have an entire room full of these Tupperware holders. They ship you out in bulk with everything. <laughs> I, um, I think it's important for me to try and make a routine with the video logs. I have no one to talk to. I have no way of communicating back to Earth. Yeah. I want to make a video about how negative my situation is because it's only going to perpetuate the situation. However, I've had to come to admit the situation that I find myself in. I can't reroute power back to the engines and I can't send any kind of distress signal. The likelihood of ground control knowing our exact location is one thing. But knowing the direction that the ship was knocked into, they have a one in eight million something chance of getting the exact degree and the exact distance. So, hey, never give up hope. Maybe I'll stumble onto a Another wayward star sailor. Man can dream. Of course, I can't really deny the fact that I miss my wife terribly. Miss Katie and Jack. This t shirt that I'm wearing. <coughs> She bought me this when we were in Mexico. Riviera Maya, we went. Two weeks, best holiday ever. I'm from Scotland, originally. Ended up in the space program and met her there. She was a process engineer. Hated her, absolutely hated her. Everything I tried to do, everything I tried to grow and invest in, I tried proposing a cross-pollination. <laughs> Proposal didn't go very well. She hit me with a, a load of procedures and expense. Reason, uh, she showed me this whole process flow of why this was a terrible idea and why there was no budget for it. I hated her. Ironically, we were 
assigned to the same project a year and a bit later. She, she was always so straight-laced. And I was always cheeky chappy, making jokes and never given the situation the fullest attention or seriousness that it deserved. I always maintained that she overcompensated, so it balanced itself out, right? She just didn't look into her face when I asked her out. <laughs> she was caught between slapping me and kissing me, I think. In the end, she did neither and walked away confused and not easily deterred. I chased after her. I, uh, spun around and I said, listen, you were going to do one of two things. You were going to slap me. Or you were going to kiss me. I'm an opportunist. So I kissed her. And I didn't get slapped. Remember her first date? Uh, I'm going to leave the first date for another time. I, uh, I hadn't intended to make this look more than two minutes. Status update of how I came to be in this fine mess and an update on supplies. <laughs> now I can't stop thinking about my family. Even the academy training program was so much fun. Kind of glad I decided to do the video log. I feel slightly less hopeless about <laughs> my situation. I need to show you this pistachio plant. I'm so proud of it. It's like a third child. I named it Ricky. I don't know why. I haven't even sexed the plant. There is one thing that I'd like to mention before I sign off. I don't want to end on a, a sad note, but to the families of the four cosmonauts. I feel like any words I could summon would do them a disservice. Susan Denny, Gordon Dempsey, Chuck Frost. <laughs> I never gave him a break for that. Sheena Pinzer. She was a, she was a, a goddess of electronics. <laughs> Jack, oh man. I used to give this man so much love. Why parents decide to name their kid Jack with a name like Frost? He was Canadian. Ah, funny guy. Very funny guy. Funny in the sense that he had almost no sense of humor. But 
That made everything he said even funnier. Kind of likened him to Data from an old movie, old, old TV series called Star Trek. If you ever saw that. No, that's, that's, that's mean. Jack was a good guy. Uh, all right. I, um, I just wanted to say that they were four of the bravest souls I've ever met in my entire life. And I hope wherever you are now, I'll be thinking of you every day. And I really hope that one day I find a way to get a message back to Earth. Even if I'm not there to take it myself, I... It's not over yet. I can find a way. We have a whole encyclopedia on our drives for engineering, electronic, mechanical, mechatronics. Apparently that's a mix of the two I didn't even know existed. I'm kidding, I did. But hey, I have time. As long as I can keep my plants healthy. Which I am pretty confident with. You know, Ricky's nuts taste amazing. Yeah. I keep the plants alive. Start teaching myself some. I know the fundamentals of mechanical, but. Thrusters are in pretty bad, pretty bad way, but maybe I can salvage metal from elsewhere and I need to find a way of creating some kind of forge to warp metal, but couplings in the connectors are, couplings were melted, as were the connectors. Hydraulic fluid was flash boiled and uh, the specifics don't really matter at this stage. Listen, uh, what is meant to be a five minute recording has went into something a lot more. I will say farewell. I don't know how often I'll do these or if I continue to. I think I will brighten the mood a little bit, but I, uh, could really use a little help right now, if anyone's looking in, a little help. I am Robert Jenkins, and I am lost in space. <laughs>